But yeah, no, the Age of Reckoning fucking died because, the, like, people's PCs would vomit. Uh-huh. Because when I was in the last fight I was in with my character, uh, I saw people's models loading in, mm -hmm. but my PC was chugging so hard that the environment hadn't loaded in yet. Oh, shit. <laughs> so I didn't realize until I was down to, like, half health, I was running straight into their fucking wall. Oh, man. Can't let you do that, Cat Fox. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's one of these jobbers. Yep, he's a footman this time, not a paladin. Oh, he's even lower tier. Yep. Except that he's, for some reason, stronger, but whatever, we'll just ignore that. You know, a lot of times in games like this, I have to sit back and wonder, like, the fuck are the enemies thinking? Mm -hmm. Like, if they've seen you... Like, this guy at least has an excuse of being underground. Yeah. But if they see you tear through some stuff, and then look at you like, I can take that. Yeah. That's something that I see a lot in uh, in tabletop games, is DMs like to make enemies fight to the death. And, like, they have no good reason to do so a lot of the time, especially if the rest of their allies have been torn through, like, paper. Like, you see one of your dudes go down, and you haven't even scratched the opposing force. Like, you fucking... <laughs> whatever, like, it's not... You, you just run. You just get out of there. Because, I yeah. th this is something I see a lot of DMs that play a lot of tabletop uh -huh. transfer over, either finding a system that has this naturally or homebrew rules for it. Yeah. But a morale system. Yeah. See, I don't even homebrew rules as a DM. Um, I just make things act in character. Yeah, that's, that's the easy way, but a lot of people like having the numbers there. Yeah, I suppose. They like having the dice roll because so many things are dedicated by dice roll that's like, yeah. when do they run away? It's like, well, bleh, roll. Yeah, and see, I just base it on a general hit point count. Like, if you're if you're facing a single enemy um, and you're wailing on it pretty hard, if you get it down to about a sixth of its health or so and it hasn't done any visible damage to you, like, it's, it's probably going to run. Unless it's got something it really needs to protect with its life, or it's just that stupid. Yeah. Or it's a fucking mindless creature, like a golem or undead or something. Yeah, I was about like, to say. They will fight to the death. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. Yeah. But, like, if you're fighting a giant animal or something like that, or if you're fighting a group of goblins, those goblins are probably going to run away when you kill seven of the ten of them. What I enjoy is people that have played a lot of tabletop and they tweak the morale rules based on what you're fighting. Mm -hmm. Like, you'll have some things that are difficult to bring down their morale, but once they break, they're done, yeah. they leave. Then you have a bunch of things that will break relatively easily, uh -huh. but recover just as easily. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did that with, uh, with a giant scorpion in the desert once. Um, like, they attacked the shit out of it uh, in my campaign. And it ran away. It started digging into the sand and they couldn't follow it. They had no means to do so. And so later that night, it showed up again saying, oh, look, food, because it's a fucking giant scorpion and it doesn't remember that that was the exact same group that attacked it and nearly killed it before. And so it attacked them again and they're like, oh, this motherfucker. All right, we got to kill it this time. They did. But yeah, it was just... <laughs> well... And this also goes back to you saying, like, be in character. Mm -hmm. You have, like, some people, like, say, bandits. Uh -huh. You beat up enough of the bandits, and the bandits are like, all right, we're in this for profit. Yeah. We're getting killed. Yeah. We can't deal with these guys. Fuck it. Right. And run. Then you have people like goblins or kobolds, uh -huh. where you can kill a bunch of them, and they'll run away. But then they'll go set traps. Yes. Yeah. And they'll regroup, and they'll look for ambush, and they'll look for other ways to fuck with this group. Right. They'll, they'll, they'll get... Uh, re recruits, like new recruits, they'll get reinforcements is the word I was looking for. They'll get those and then they'll tell them, okay, this is what these guys can do. Let's let's prepare for this kind of thing. And so, yeah, it's, it's kind of what the party does, honestly. Like if the party starts getting its shit pushed in, typically players will run if they're just clearly outmatched and then they'll start planning. They'll start coming up with new ideas for, okay, we saw this thing do this. How do we protect against that? Especially when they start encountering things like death effects or level drain or things like that. 
It's like, all right, we need protection from evil and shit like that. <laughs> That's D&D &D specifically, but I mean, you get the idea. Yeah. Like if something starts doing stuff that your party isn't familiar with, mm -hmm. or that you find out, oh shit, we are very weak to this. Yep, by the way, you see that little priest yeah. run away. <laughs> yeah, so this is a kind of monotonous, frustrating part of the dungeon, uh, because there's a lot of different rooms here. That moves it over, and each room has interesting things. Mm. I'm not sure why I did that instead of methodically going there. Oh, wait, no, I do know why. Because I thought once you finished this dungeon, the enemies cleared out. Yeah. I was wrong, but <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to beat the boss first. Okay. And then I'll go back and get the treasures and, and the uh, shaman. Because <clears throat> you can get the shaman. Oh, actually, I don't know if you can get the shaman until after you do the next dungeon. Mm. And I think I forgot that in this playthrough also. Okay. Yeah. In fact, that might be what I was thinking. Just do the boss first so that the shaman appears. And so you can get that. Because that's the holy shaman. Um, the second to last one you can get in the game. And that's what uh, Nina requires for her best uh, best shamanized form. That's what John requires. That's what Bo requires. Although Bo also requires the devil shaman, which you get after this. But, yeah. Yeah, like, I had a plan, I just don't think it works out if I remember correctly. Okay. But it has been a while. So, yeah. Yeah, world versus world, and, uh, ways NPCs do stuff. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of D&D, &D, uh, I don't know if I'd call them podcasts, just videos in general. People giving advice and talking about lore of monsters and stuff like that. Just because, like... A friend of mine's going to start up a 5th edition campaign once I'm done with my game. Um, and I'm kind of curious about some of the stuff, and it's just kind of interesting. Yeah, because you didn't do a lot of 5th edition. No, I haven't done any 5th edition yet. Yeah, did you do any 4th, or did you go straight no, from 3.5 to I pass? skipped 4th entirely, because from what I'd heard, it was a lot like WoW. And, like, you don't play tabletop to sit there and just do one thing over and over. You play tabletop to be interesting. Like, you play sorcerers and wizards to have a versatile spell list and, like, in inter interesting maneuverability options and stuff like that. Fucking dimension door, spider climb, fly, that kind of stuff. Um, and you play fighters to have this wide range of interesting things you can do. If you want to just sit there and beat the shit out of stuff. You can play Barbarian, but even then, like, Pathfinder Barbarians can fucking add elements to their attacks while they're raging. <laughs> uh, I know Barbarians in 5th, if you go with Totem Animal, you could do all sorts of weird shit. Uh-huh. But if you go Frenzy... Yeah, you just want to be the DPS. You want to be the DPS, but more importantly, you want the power trip of just marching through things. <laughs> yes. Berserker is what you build when you want a no bullshit build. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, they're throwing damage at me? Cool. Most of the common types are have for me. Whatever. Yeah, Do yeah it. pretty much. Oh, you're throwing traps? I have advantage on deck saving throws against traps. Yeah. And my constitution normally crazy high. Yeah. Once I hit level nine, oh, you're trying to charm me. That's hilarious. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm going to continue to scream in your face now. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh... Like, tabletop is there to be interesting. Yeah. And even then, like, if you kill something, a lot of the time the DM will give you the opportunity to do something cool in the way you do it. And even if the DM doesn't specifically do that, like, your lead-up to the attack can be, I flip my axe around, backhand it, and swipe it upward, and try to bisect the thing diagonally. Like, that's fucking cool. Or, I grab it by the fucking head, slam it against the stone wall, and start running and grinding it like a cheese grater. Yeah, which, I mean, doesn't make sense if you're using your axe or your whatever else, but, like, it's still cool. All right, fine. I swing the axe, I hook it in the neck, I slam it against the wall, and I start dragging it across there the There we go, wall. yes. Yeah, monks are more likely to do the cheese grater method. Yeah. <laughs> like, you need to go monk barbarian if you want to Ridley grind somebody. Yes. Yeah. 
Ridley grind. That's a that's a good term. Yeah, it's what you see in like every time you see Ridley. Pretty much. He grabs Samus and just drags her against the fucking wall. Yeah. Which is badass as hell. Yeah. Speaking of which, we just watched a thing. Oh yeah, we watched the Smash <laughs> thing. Yeah. Ridley's finally in it. That's yeah. neat. I mean, I didn't care whether Ridley was in it or not ever. Um, but I'm kind of glad Sakurai found a way to make him work. Yeah. Because, like, it's funny, in Brawl, people wanted Villager, and he's like, I can't find a way to make a Villager a viable fighter character. And then in Smash 4, he does it. Yeah. In Smash 4, a lot of people wanted Ridley for some fucking reason. Yeah, I know why. Don't, don't, don't shit on me. <laughs> I know why. <laughs> he's the villain. He's another, uh, another Metroid representative, whatever. Anyway, but... People wanted Ridley, and he's like, he's too big. I can't make him viable with this. He found a way. <laughs> yeah. And so it could be very interesting to see that. Speaking of which, Ganon finally isn't 100% a Falcon clone. It yeah, we saw like. him use a sword. He has a sword. Thank the gods. And it seems like they got rid of custom moves. I mean, this isn't 100% certain. It just kind of looks that way. But it looks like they move or they they put custom moves into characters' move sets yeah. to make them interesting and different. Well, I was fine with custom moves. Yeah. The problem I have with custom moves is you randomly unlocked them. Yeah, fucking grinding for custom moves took forever. And I, I'm the kind of asshole who 100% Smash Brothers games because that's just what I do because I love Smash Brothers. Um, and I hated grinding for custom moves. Like, I found a method to do it, and it worked pretty well, but it was still time spent that I could have spent doing something else. Yeah, it's... it's not fun. Yeah. It's not engaging. It yeah. just... If they had locked them behind doing certain things, that would be one thing. It yeah. would still suck, but the fact that they're random... To be honest, that's not my biggest complaint about them. My biggest complaint is that you have to tie them to profiles, to name profiles. Oh, yeah! And you have to turn it on every time you enter the, the menu. And it's just a pain in the ass. And like you have to you have to create presets that you attach to those profiles. You can't just pick your custom moves on the character selection screen. No, you have to go to a different fucking menu and input your custom moves. And by the way, you might also input like these badges that increase your stats. And it's like, I don't want that. I just want my custom moves and I want to be able to access them easily. I tried to practice with custom moves just because they were interesting, but like, it was such a pain in the ass to do that. I just didn't bother after a while. And yeah. Plus, you couldn't use them in online play, so what the fuck was the point? Yep. Yeah. Like, so much of Smash Brothers, good idea, poorly implemented. Yeah. Right now, though, like, it looks, looks really good. Ultimate looks like they listened to everybody. Which is amazing. That is an amazing feat to be able to actually... We'll see how the mechanics work, but it looks like they give a shit about dodge rolling being an issue because yeah. people did that all the time in For Glory and it's irritating as shit. It's a poor tactic when you know how to counter it, but it's irritating as shit when you don't. And so they got rid of um, multiple dodge rolls. Like they re reduced the invincibility frames on them if you use them too quickly. Um, they did stuff with ledge mechanics. Uh, they allowed mobile air dodging, which is interesting. I don't know if that means that you can wave dash or not, but like they made mobile air dodging a thing, but it also doesn't eat the rest of your jumps like it does in melee, which is fantastic. So like, man, they are, they brought back every fucking character somehow. How the hell did they get Solid Snake? Yeah, what was... kind of fucking legal hoops did they have to go through to get Konami to actually bring in Solid Snake? I know exactly what legal hoops they jumped through. They said, Konami, do you want a fuck ton of money and no work? <laughs> yeah. And Konami's like, yeah, what do we need to do? Let us use Snake again? That's fine, we're not doing shit with him anymore. That's probably what happened, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> God damn, they did so much. Yeah, the, the legal hoops isn't how did they get it from Konami. It was Nintendo gave up enough money to get it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But I guess since they're just importing so many of the assets over, mm -hmm. you don't have to spend too much money on developing the game itself. Nope, I'm sure they just tweaked the graphics and the moveset a little bit. 
And he looked more interesting too yeah. than he is in Brawl. Like he's a lot, a lot faster. You can plant your C4 much more quickly and easily. Well, it seems like a lot of shit looked a lot faster than in yeah. previous games. Yeah, which is nice. <laughs> Thing. Yeah, it's it's looking to be really cool. I'm they, so glad they brought Mega Man back too. And they took out all of the the final smashes that was just you turn into something and move around. Yeah, also true. Which I like those. Um, I like honestly, them. I don't have a problem with them at all. I like those in idea and execution. I've never gotten them to do anything. Yeah, yeah, that's true. People run away and all. It's just a game of cat and mouse for a little while. Yeah, it just puts the entire match on hold. Like, if you're Giga Bowser, right. anyone sticks around to get killed by Giga Bowser, it's their own damn fault. But my problem with it, actually, Giga Bowser is one of the, um, not one of the worst defenders by a long shot because he's so fucking huge. It's actually hard to get away from him. Depending on the stage. Giga Mac is is easy to dodge yeah. and uh, a number of other people. But either and way, like- Wario Man is just hard to control. Yeah, that's also- Like true. nine out of 10 times when I went Wario Man, I would fling myself off the goddamn screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the reason I have a problem with getting rid of all of that, I mean, not that I care that much. It's Final Smashes, I don't even use them that much. But like, the reason I have kind of an issue is because Final Smashes looked very samey in Smash 4. Like most of them, well, not most, a good chunk of them were just, you hit the opponent with a close range attack and then it brings them up or to a different screen and then you do Omni Slash with your character, regardless of whether which character it is. Like Ike had fucking Omni Slash, Robin had Omni Slash, uh, Greninja had Omni Slash, Cloud, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but but seriously, like a lot of them looked very samey, and I'm afraid that's going to be the case with this one too. But we'll see. Like Sonic's looks interesting. Yeah. Uh, Pac-Man's looks like a huge version of Sonic's, slightly slower. Um, so we'll see what happens with that kind of stuff. Oh, oh fucking DDD almost had Omni Slash. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kirby did. <laughs> so with Final Smashes, you tended to have a couple of categories. Uh huh. You had the I'm going to touch you, and then take you to a big animation, and yeah. deal a fuck ton of damage. Yep. Um, I'm going to fire a giant beam. Mm -hmm. I'm going to jump off screen and start harassing you. Yep. Uh, I'm going to do a huge AoE mm -hmm. that does damage that isn't as good as the touch you death. Right. Um, and then the transformations. Yep, pretty much. Because there's not a lot you can do with a Final Smash uh, based on just how the game works. I did love Peach's Final Smash, though. Peach's, Where yeah. they, they fall asleep and then you eat those peaches and recover your health. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, Peach and Luigi had these AoE effect ones. Yeah. Uh, no, Luigi actually got boring. Um, Luigi's in Brawl was cool. It was this weird status effect. Yeah, yeah, show. that's what I was thinking of. Um, what, did they change it? Yeah, they changed it to the Poltergeist. Oh, which that's right. It was basically just another suck him in and hit him out yep. thing. Donkey Kong's is kind of neat just because it has some interaction. But you they're do. changing that to an ora, ora, ora. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see about that. <clears throat> oh, well, but yeah, I don't care that much if they kind of make the final smashes boring. Um, because most people don't use Final Smashes anyway, and yeah. you can't do that. Oh, 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 oh! They're adding battlefield levels yes. to every stage. Now every stage is tournament viable. This is amazing. <laughs> so they have been listening, and it's great. <laughs> most stages will be tournament viable. I'm sure people will come up with some reason or another for certain stages to get banned because their backgrounds are too noisy. Yeah, probably. Well, maybe. We'll see. It, that's usually not an issue with Smash Brothers. Like that's I, true. I know it is with a lot of other fighting games, but not Smash Brothers so much. Uh, but yeah, like we'll see about that. It's it's cool. <laughs> oh, you found us. You don't look like a robber. Do you have something against Saint Eva? <gasps> Fuck the church. How do you like those statues? Make you feel bad? What are you saying I did? I just took believers to the Grand Church. That's all. Is there, is there something, something wrong with that? that? Oh no, he's so innocent. I'm gonna kick you off that ledge now. All the believers wanted to go to the Grand Church, so I took them. Everybody's hearts were torn up. The soul of the average person could not fight the strong powers of Saint Eva. Oh, poop, your gem turned black. Oh, are you a Demons? He's a Demons. Oh, hi, Demons. His name is Necroman. 
Oh, Necroman. His, his name Do is Father. You see Man. the people in the jail? They're Thank also going, going to the Grand Church. church. <laughs> yeah, when you lock them up, yeah, they begin praising Saint Eva if they were crazy. Strong prayers give our God incredible powers! Yeah, so this concept shows up in Breath of Fire 4, and I didn't realize it until now. Oh. Strong prayers and strong feelings giving incredible power to something evil. Like, that shows up in Breath of Fire 4 in a different aspect. It's not an entity that they pray to. or They don't pray to it. And it's not an entity, but the idea of these strong emotions powering something shows up pretty hard. This necroman is terrible at his job. He's sending shit zombies at him. Yeah, the Zambers. Those are grave crawlers. Yep. They're two ones. I mean, you can bring them back really easily, but friggin' one toughness, man, come on. <laughs> Get on it. You don't even have a death baron out. Like, that's what makes him dangerous. <laughs> or anything that's a good sack out that you're just sending them. Like, you magic nerd. Fuck, man, you're sending two ones to attack a party of legendaries. What are you doing? <laughs> gonna job it so hard. I mean, yeah. Actually, you keep complaining about this kind of stuff. He has a reason for sending these jobbers, and he knows they're jobbers. Oh. So at least there's that. Is it human wave tactics, or is this a Dark Souls 2 when you kill something too close to the golems they turn on? Uh, no, it's not either of those. Oh. You'll see soon. Interesting. I do like those statues. Those are really neat statues. They almost look Silent Hill-esque. Yeah. Like, the Breath of Fire games sometimes have really fucking creepy shit in them. <laughs> and I love them. Why is he sending the two ones? Does he have some sack outlet? Does he have a combat trick? <laughs> What's he doing? Is that's he just a, misplaying? That's a good question, Mega Man. We're gonna find out what his weird tactic is. Find the evil energy. You'll find Dr. Wiley. Is this some kind of wombo combo? <laughs> is he about to go infinite? Alright, here, here's the reason. Alright. Thank All you right, very here. much, everyone. Thank you for killing them. The souls of the dead go directly to Eva's god, and it becomes God's strength. Next, we will take your souls. Oh, okay. Why couldn't you just kill them yourself? Probably because he wanted to kill you first because you're an enemy. You're, you're lazy, Necroman. Yeah, I mean, he is. And also... Isn't that a cool sprite? That is a cool sprite. Look at the flesh yeah. dangling off of his fucking bones. That's, that's so cool. That's a metal sprite. Yeah. <laughs> the question I have for Necroman is... You keep the souls in the zombies? I thought the whole point was that they were soulless. <laughs> Necroman, you're bad at your job! Well, I think it's actually more body horror. Uh, like, yes, they're undead, but they're also transformed bodies of these creatures. Uh, or of these, of these people. Oh, yeah. Rot breath. So this is the only time when it's actually, like, kind of a threat. Because you can't just kill him in three turns. Hmm. Also, um, I don't, yeah, I'm pretty sure I didn't try it in this because I don't think anybody has it, but I don't think uh, Kirie works on him, which is the instant death uh, against undead things. Oh, okay. It works against all, um, it works against all uh, non-boss right. undead, but yeah, yeah, not, not so much against this guy, I'm pretty sure. So seeing him turn Nina into a zombie. Uh -huh. I know there's a couple of RPGs, especially roguelikes, that uh -huh. do shit like this. Yeah. Where the boss will set up a one-two punch, uh -huh. where they'll inflict some kind of status condition onto somebody. Oh, there's death. Yeah. Um, they'll inflict some kind of status condition on somebody, and then they will do something to, like, consume or harvest anyone with that status condition. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's pretty nasty. Yeah, where it's like, I could very easily see a boss like this being like an eater of the dead. Uh-huh. And do something to inflict zombie, and then have a move he'll throw out every now and again that's a one-shot kill for zombies. Yeah. Or even more, like, go fuck yourself, a one-shot that prevents revival in that fight. That would suck. Oh. Though in a fight like, like... For a JRPG, that's how you really raise the tensions. Yeah, no shit. By taking away options and shit like that. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, fuck, no, 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 heal that, heal that now. You remember, um, it, does this happen in Final Fantasy IX? Um, 
I think if you're frozen and you get hit, you just disintegrate in that battle. Mm, if I'm I not mistaken. I think it's stone in Final Fantasy IX. Oh, yeah, it is stone. That's right. And I think you have to get hit for a certain amount of HP. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, but you're gone. Other, the only other thing I can remember in Final Fantasy IX that does anything else like that is the bird enemies going yeah. up the tree. Yeah. Because they have an the, LOL Vore move. The zoo. Yeah. Yeah, and FF7 has stuff like that, too, where you're at, you're a party member just gets knocked out of the fight and there's nothing you can do to um, revive them or anything because they're not technically dead. Yeah, and that's like the biggest threat with the ruby weapon fight. Yeah, definitely. It gets rid of two of your party members. Uh, 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 it's strong. John. He's a member mm. of the Dragon Clan. Ah, uh, fuck. But he probably would not be able to compete with our god. Our god is the king of this world. Our god is an awesome Dave god. He shows himself after absorbing strength of the believers. It's close. And then he goes explode. Bye, demons. Oh, no. <laughs> you can't not get that. Every rid He can go in and out of every freely now. You know, Nina can. Neat. He can. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. So this part of the area... Um, doesn't have random battles, but I think the other part does. Okay. I have made a huge mistake. No, not really. <laughs> uh, oh, no random battles there either. Maybe I didn't make a mistake. Yeah, okay. Success! Yep. Yeah. Unless, of course, you climb the stairs and then you get in battles, but we'll see. Either way, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, this is Bando, like, two very short dungeons in a row, basically. And then you get, uh, the next episode, which is crazy. Like, that is, the climax of the game is going to be our next, uh, our next couple of episodes. Yeah, because we're, we're getting close to that point of no return that JRPGs love so much. Yeah. Because Infinity, the final dungeon, is kind of just the victory lap. Yeah, oh, so there's these dudes. Why would he hold us like this? Must he must be planning something really evil. Well. I can't take it much longer. I've been locked up here for so long. I think I'm going crazy. Yep. Well, I'd let you out. Because, I mean, you can get out right now. I mean, here's your but, chance. The door is yep, open. Here's your chance. I'm walking. I'm going to hit the thing. You have until I get to the end of this hallway to casually thing. walk out the door. Oh, oh late now. I'm sorry. I'd like to play a game. <laughs> it has very simple rules. All you have to do is see your freedom before you and take it. Yep. You simply need to walk out the door. Oh, the father, he deceived me. How oh. dare he? <laughs> We've been lied to. Yep. By the way, all these people, I think, uh, show up in the church as um, uh, what do you call them? Partitioners? No. Mm. Is that it? Uh, parishioners. parishioners. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah, they all show up as parishioners if you come here before this uh, scenario. Mm. And Father Manson's there too. Snake. Snake staff. That's for cat. It is, I think, the best weapon you can get for her if you don't, um, if you don't get any secret weapons. Mm. Oh, yeah, so there's that. So I guess, yeah, no enemies in this spot. I made the right choice. Uh -huh. I forgot that I made the right choice. For the longest time, I thought those were, like, ball and chain situation. Or not ball and chain. Well, yeah, yeah. ball and chains. Uh, no, they're skulls. Yeah. And that was because I had a really shitty TV when I first played this. Oh, who are you? They're, they're, you're the demons. The sacred church. Oh no, Manson and a nun. Ha ha ha. Oh, it's Cat. Oh, you bitch. Hi, it's me. Bug, you got Manson? Did you find out how to get to Evray? Tigger, I almost killed you, like, right now. <laughs> what do you think? Pretty good, huh? Found the priest's clothes, and I'm a nun. Oh god, the fetish art is starting <laughs> immediately. Yep. What is with Capcom and naked cat girls who become nuns? Don't know. <laughs> and Felicia too. Tiga. 
I understand that you and Kat are getting married, but you don't have to have the honeymoon right fucking now. Yep. So here's our, uh, here's our infiltration plan. Study. Oh, is this one of those, you learn the things and then you're given multiple choice when you go in? Yes. That's awesome. That is I love exactly those. what it is. And this is, yeah, are you mad that I'm staying with Tiga? Yes. Really? really? She gets happy if you say that. But it's just for a little while. I Kat? promised Tiga that I would stand by his side when he attacks the church. Cat, I need you to punch things really hard right now. Yeah, seriously. I feel bad for Tiga, but I don't want to be his wife. I'll return to all of you eventually. Tell everyone that for me. Well, that's that's really good and all, but we need you to punch things really hard, like right now. Yeah. All right, here's the setup. This is it. It's almost time to break into the Grand Church. Are we ready, Bug? Did you learn the teachings of St. Eva? No, I did not. I'm sure, the one. Sure, you? there'll be questions. Like, you gotta know this shit, dude. Do your homework, because I'm illiterate. I can. <laughs> yeah, so here's your hint go to the church, learn the teachings. So, what you're supposed to do. Um... Oh, yeah, I guess they actually tell you. Make a donation. So you gotta make a bunch of donations and eventually they'll give you a key item. Okay. Which I think I do? I might do it off screen. Um, but yeah, you, you get the teachings and it tells you the prayer that everybody recites. Okay. And then you have to memorize, like you personally have to remember the prayer? Uh, you only have to remember the last part. Okay. And even then, if you don't remember it, you just fight a battle instead of just getting in. Yeah. So I it's still, no big deal. I still dig it when the game, like, gives you information and then NPCs are like, all right, quiz time, motherfucker. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Yeah, so I must be going to a save point or something at this point. Like, okay. there's not much left in this episode. Yep. Uh, yeah, so... We learned very important things, yeah. like... St. Eva's church is evil, and Tiga has a thing for nuns. Yep. Also, prepare your anuses. Next episode, shit gets real. We're in the final air. We're approaching the end. Yep. It's almost over. Yeah. Yeah. 